Hello and welcome to the episode 179 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we'll deal with a brilliant idea from Brian Epstein with various developments on the 1964 and 1965 tours and with the start of the recording of Good Night. On the 28th of June 1961, the Beatles with Pete Best on drums were engaged at the Top Ten Club in Hamburg, West Germany, for their second residence in town. Another live show in 1962. The same lineup of the band played the Majestic Ballroom in Birkenhead for the first of 17 engagements. While the concert itself was not particularly remarkable, the gig was fundamental to several future developments. The Majestic Barroom was managed by Top Rank, Britain's biggest entertainment organization in 1962, with several cinemas, theaters, barrooms and bingo clubs under their umbrella. Beatles manager Brian Epstein got the contacts of the general Top Rank head, Len Funkert, through Bill Martin, administrator of the local Majestic Barroom. Epstein wrote to Funkert to get the Beatles to play a series of concerts in the top rank venues. Len, who received dozens of letters similar to Brian's, replied with the names and the addresses of all the top rank barrooms, accompanied with a note that basically told him to try his luck. In his typical fashion, Epstein did just that. It worked. Epstein walked away with 12 out of 28 total venues agreeing to host the band within a year of the Birkenhead Top Rank debut. In 1963, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, played at the Queen's Hall in Leeds, sharing the bill with Acre Bilk and his Paramount Jazz Band. There were over 3,200 people crowding the venue, with 20 stewards protecting the stage from the screaming teenagers. The stage itself was built five feet high to allow the audience to see the acts better, but also to prevent dancers to invade the platform, as reported in a newspaper article shown in the complete Beatles Chronicle. The same article talked about a girl biting a steward during the first performance and another one escaping and hiding beneath the stage afterwards. Beatlemania, not officially born yet, was already in full swing. Travelling day in 1964 with the Beatles flying from Christchurch, New Zealand, to Sydney, Australia, switching planes in Auckland. When they reached Sydney, the Fabs took a plane for Brisbane, where they landed just past midnight. More touring in 1965. This was initially meant to be a day off for the band, but two more concerts were added in the schedule of the tour at the Teatro Adriano in Rome, Italy. It was not the success the organizers hoped, though. These performances, just like the two held on the previous day, only filled the theater at half capacity. As pointed out in yesterday's episode of What A Fab Day, the British press reported that the hot weather might be blamed for the audience debacle in Italy, with some of the venues, like the Teatro Adriano, lacking air conditioning during afternoons with up to 98 Fahrenheit degrees outside, 37 Celsius degrees. The official spiel, then, was that whoever managed to have the venue even half full in those conditions had to be more than satisfied. But I doubt the Beatles shared the same view of the affair. Nothing happened in 1967 apart from George Harrison being fined for breaking the speed limit, something that I'm sure changed the history of the band and of its public in oh so many ways, and so we get to 1968. On this date, the Beatles reconvened once again at the EMI Studios to work on Good Night, a lullaby that John Lennon had written for his five-year-old son, Julian. From the beginning, though, it was Ringo who had the task to carry the song through, singing lead vocals. The session took place between 7 p.m. and 4.30 a.m., 
and featured Ringo singing accompanied by John on the acoustic guitar and George on the shaker. After several rehearsal takes, one of which was included in the Anthology 3 album, five basic rhythm track takes were recorded. Tomorrow we'll talk about some more traveling in 1965 and 1969, but today we have concluded our daily appointment. Well, almost. Before that, I have the pleasure to remind you once again to please visit www.simonmas.com support. Helping me with a donation, with a share, or buying my albums is a good way to make me keep on bringing you music-related content that can be informative, useful, and entertaining. If you think my output so far is none of those things, please drop me a line and let me know how I can improve. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.